Today's movie is a special request from Patreon supporter El Corona the Hat which brings doom to all. Interesting name. Anyway, he asked me to review the movie Giver 2 Dark Hero. And hey, what do you know, I reviewed the first movie last episode. That's convenient. In recent years, there's been a trend for movie series that started out R-rated to get sanitized over time and eventually switch over to a PG-13 rating to try and appeal to a bigger audience. And the results usually suck pretty bad. So it's refreshing to see a sequel that goes in the opposite direction and moves from a PG-13 to an R rating. Although to be honest, I still don't really know why the first movie was rated PG-13. It's tamer than some G-rated movies I've seen. Steve Wang returned to direct the movie, although Screaming Mad George is nowhere to be found. I guess he was too busy working on Children of the Corn 3. However, the cast for the movie is completely different, so this time main character Sean Barker is played by none other than Solid Snake himself, David Hayter. Fine by me, considering the guy from the first movie had all the charisma of a glass of milk. Almost immediately, the movie wants you to know it's rated R, either that or an episode of Miami Vice. So what are these shifty looking gentlemen up to? Dolls. The latest technology. It makes cocaine with plastic. Shape it into anything you like. That makes sense. Barbie already looks like she eats nothing but cocaine. Right now I'm waiting for the ninjas from Miami Connection to appear. But instead I'll just settle for the Giver. I don't know if they hit him, but they definitely made his entrance a lot more dramatic. And did somebody say R rating? Let the man go. Yeah, right. Huh. Eh, this guy's just mad the Giver suit's nicer than his. So, what's the Giver gonna do? Beat him up a little bit while saying some cheesy one-liners? Oh! Sweet Jesus, even Ben Affleck's Batman would tell this guy to tone it down. Not Michael Keaton Batman though, that guy didn't give a fuck. He actually smiled when he killed people. He even set a guy on fire using the Batmobile's exhaust. That Batman was a fucking psycho. A lot of people forget that. Oh, when the security guard ends up getting killed anyway, so great job there, Giver. Well, that does it. Not only am I gonna kill you, I'm also gonna ruin your suit, asshole. Looks like Sean's made some improvements to the Giver suit. Now he can make his own opening titles. Whoa, Les Claypool did the music for this? Man, I hope he plays My Name is Mud. And I know there's a long Wang joke in there somewhere, but I just can't think of one right now. After a long night of killing people, Sean sees a news report about a supposed werewolf sighting, which can only mean those pesky zoonoids are back. It was a man, and then it was a thing. When asked to describe his attacker, Doug gave us this drawing, which he says is a copy of the painting found on the cave wall. Nice of that caveman to put his five-year-old's doodle of Godzilla on the cave wall, but I don't know what this has to do with the zoonoids. This has got Sean so worried he's turning into 90s Johnny Depp. But the real revelation is that he also can't draw very well. Sean heads to Utah where the attacks occurred to investigate, but something tells me the locals aren't going to be very cooperative. Excuse me, uh, there's an archaeological dig going on near here. Do you know where it is? I have to get to that dig. Oh, no, no, nothing. We don't take kindly to archaeology enthusiasts around these parts. Maybe sexy librarian archaeologist here can help him out. Do you work at the dig? Maybe. I have to see it. I've been doing these for months. It took you months to draw that? Yeah, I see it in my dreams and I put it down on paper. You've seen this? You've seen this? Yeah, on her fridge. She gives him a ride to the dig site where the cave paintings are located, along with something essential for any archaeological dig, lots and lots of beer. Can't be making important discoveries sober, after all. I'm not really sure what they hope to learn from this cave, other than some cavemen got attacked by jellyfish and were possibly visited by Teletubbies. And you've already crashed their dig, so might as well introduce yourself. Sean, my father, Marcus Edwards. 
Judging by how he's dressed, I think he's actually looking for gold in there. And I think Tubbs is a little pissed that Sean killed Crockett earlier. Later, while Sean and Corey are having a Dawson's Creek moment, the brother of the guy killed earlier goes looking for the dirty werewolf that done killed his brother. You think maybe we could do this when there's a little more light? Why? Place looks pretty well lit to me. Pretty soon, though, they're attacked by the Zoonoid version of Rocksteady. Good thing Sean's nearby so he can also not save this guy. And is it me or does this thing kind of sound like a kitty cat? <laughs> oh look, Sean actually managed to save somebody. Where did you come from? I destroyed all of you. No you didn't. Jimmy Walker's monster was alive at the end of the last movie. I still haven't forgiven you for that, by the way. Alright, time for the battle to see who wins the cosplay competition. Pro tip, sexiest always wins. And what do you know, turns out you can just have a superhero monster fight scene and not have it interrupted by a bunch of goofy bullshit. Who'da thunk it? Mm, I suppose I could chase after him, but... nah. Oh, shit. <gasps> Look at him! He's scared crazy! I'm just sorry I didn't get here sooner. Yeah, not as sorry as this guy is. Sean may not have stopped the Zoonoid, but at least his hair still looks awesome. And I think something's up with one of the archaeologists. Just curious, right? I saw you leave camp in a hurry. I, I just figured you'd seen the bear again. Now you and I both know there wasn't any bear. Wait. You're with the government. I knew it! Damn Clinton administration. And hey, don't mind me just pointing a gun at a guy's head. We like to have fun. Meanwhile, in an 80s Apple Mac commercial, turns out the guy heading the dig is actually working for Kronos. Either that or he's playing the Guyver FMV game. Back at the dig site, they uncover a spaceship, which means aliens are responsible for everything. Which we already knew. The real revelation, though, is that aliens mastered CGI long before humans did. And good job going in there without any protection, you're now infected with an incurable alien disease. So far, there's been less monster fights in this movie than the first one, but there's also been less rapping, so I'm not gonna complain. Sean tries to talk to the ship, but he's just gonna find out the aliens from Prometheus are behind everything and be really disappointed. I can't live like this anymore. Not a killer. Oh, really? Because according to the opening scene you are, Corey finds another Giver unit, which immediately gets nabbed by the guys working for Kronos. Corey is not gonna stand for this. I don't care who they are. They put up the money for this dig when no one else would. If they pull out, the ship is gone. Then tell another company. You found an alien spaceship. I think someone's gonna be interested. Guess it doesn't matter. She's caught anyway. Hey, Sean, you want to see something really scary? Looks like Crane's our main bad guy for the movie. He kind of looks like the creature from the Black Lagoon crossed with the Predator. Anyway, he gives Sean an offer. We can take the Giver out of you. We can make you normal again. Isn't that what you want? I don't know. You don't know? You can turn into a superhero whenever you want. What's the big deal? You're killers. And so are you. No. It's the one that kills, not me. There's no right part in murder. Not ever. Sean's not gonna let the Zoonoids get away with this. <laughs> Snake? Meanwhile, some other Zoonoids are transporting Cory, and I think they just drove into District 9. And why is this thing helping her? I thought the Zoonoids were supposed to be the bad guys. Dad? Dad? Okay, well, now we know your mom had a prawn fetish. Cory's dad takes on the two Zoonoids from the Jeep, and again, why does this one sound like a cat getting its tail pulled? That is a weird sound effect to use for that thing. It's like hearing this. In any case, looks like we got ourselves another fight scene. Meanwhile, Sean gets rescued by the government man, although he still can't stop asking him questions. Now listen, about this Giver unit, what can it do? It makes you really good at karate. 
That's about it. Corey, shit. I'm gonna get her. No, it's too late. I can't let you go. This yeah, fuck you for rescuing me. Oh, and turns out I was wrong about the Giver. It also gives you super Roadrunner powers. Sean goes to rescue Corey, and come on, movie. You mean you're just gonna show me guys in monster suits fighting? How am I possibly supposed to enjoy this unless one of them starts wrapping into a toilet seat? Time for Sean to show off the Giver's awesome moves. Hi, Kiva! Hi! Alright, I'll do it. This movie's really earning that R rating. The monster even coughs up red wine. That's an adult beverage, you know. Okay, I get it, you're rated R! Just kill this thing already! Jeez, good thing he hasn't seen Cory's dad yet. Just kidding. Although in my defense, the movie also does a fake out there. The Kronos men try to take over the dig site, but once again, the government has to get involved in a private business's operation. This is an outrage. We're a reputable company. Reputable companies don't conduct sick experiments on people. Yeah, that's what animals are for. However, the Zoonoids choose not to go quietly. Read you Lima Charlie, Eagle One. <laughs> There's the look of a man who just realized this movie's rated R. But apparently not rated R enough to actually show him die. And who the hell is this, anyway? You know, that's only gonna piss him off. What the hell? Lisker from the first movie? I thought he got his head ripped open. Okay, okay, they still haven't brought Jimmy Walker back, and that's what's really important. So if Lisker's back, does that mean this guy's supposed to be David Gale's character from the first one? I know it's a different actor, but so is everyone else in this movie. Whoever he is, he really wants the Giver. One more hour, Crane. We lose him. Yes, sir. Shit. Come on, the movie's rated R. Say fuck. Sean visits the ship again, which gives him a flashback by shining a laser pointer in his eye. Hmm, I'm not sure if this is an alien planet or test footage for a Metroid movie. And holy shit, the aliens created Ron Perlman! This is where the movie's low budget really shows, with most of the suits here being recycled from the first movie, but again, none of them are rapping, so I'm not gonna complain. One thing's for sure, these aliens were really, really gross. After the Zoonoids capture Cory, Sean comes to rescue her, and I gotta give props to the stunt actors in this movie. It can't have been easy putting those suits on every day and getting their backs broken. Let her go, Crane. Quit saying that and just kick their ass already! Sean, don't be a hero. I'm no hero. Never was. Never will be. Corey's dad comes in to help, and I think he's still mad about being killed off on The Walking Dead. Marcus, you are fired! Ah, oh, no, it's too easy again. Okay, that didn't work, so just run like a bitch. Oh well, no need for a gun when a simple sledgehammer will work. And her one weakness? Fire safety. Oh, and electrical hazards, I guess. So what's his badass one-liner gonna be? Bitch. Again, missed opportunity, man. You're rated R. You should have called her a cunt. I see Sean's busy battling an extra from Hell Comes to Frogtown. And if you can shoot lasers, why don't you just do that all the time? Meanwhile, Cory's dad learns why you don't fuck with the Predator. This movie should have been called Giver Bloody Hero. We were doing great things together. You could have been somebody in the company. Junior Vice President in charge of genocide? I'd rather die! Ooh, very poor choice of words there, Marcus. Cory, no, don't do that. He has the best suit in the whole movie. 
Oh, and if you're wondering if Lisker will turn back into Michael Berryman, he's not in the movie, so no, he doesn't. And hey, maybe breaking his neck will kill him this time. Why are you attacking your own kind, freak? I'm no freak, and I'm not like you. You threaten mankind. I protect them. Yeah, that is unless, of course, you're selling cocaine. With all the other Zoonoids dead, Crane uses the Giver unit they found in the ship to turn into... Uh... Airline Neck Pillow Giver? I suppose something like this was inevitable. Heroes and evil twins go together like peanut butter and evil peanut butter, after all. So we get the final battle between Sean and Crane, and I just want to say, I'm glad that this movie isn't as silly as the first one. Okay, so it's still a little silly. And, once again, props to the stunt team on this movie. Crane Giver's one of the most powerful foes Sean's fought yet, but lucky for him, he memorized all the special attacks in the manual. Well, looks like somebody's overcompensating for something. And just a reminder, you have lasers! Why don't you just shoot them? See? This model has been recalled! Uh, again, keep working on those one-liners, Sean. Sean reenacted the ending to Evil Dead when his Giver unit was ripped out in the first movie, and now it looks like Crane's becoming the Tar Zombie from Return of the Living Dead. Congratulations, Sean! You just killed a guy who was about to die anyways. Also, why didn't you just do that in the first place? So, looks like you found your destiny. A strong man doesn't need to read the future. He makes his own. With the Zoonoids defeated, Sean decides to activate the ship to prevent it from being discovered. They better hurry up and get out of there. David Hayter still needs to write the first X-Men movie. And with that, the alien testicle returns to its home planet. All in all, looks like things worked out pretty well, aside from Corey's dad dying, which seems to happen a lot to Sean's girlfriends. Wait! We're launching an underground war against Cronus. The government can use your help. Politics are fickle. They change with the times. David Hayter was in the Metal Gear Solid games. Giver 2 is a rare case where a sequel ends up being better than the original. Not only does it manage to pick a tone and stick with it, unlike the original, but the R rating also gives the fight scenes an added punch that the first didn't have. Entertainment Weekly said the movie kinda comes across like an R-rated episode of Power Rangers, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. One downside is that while the first movie was definitely low budget, it still looked like a theatrical film, whereas this one definitely looks like a direct-to-video release. Some of the monster costumes are still impressive, but there's a lot less of them and they're not as elaborate as in the first movie. It's too bad there isn't a way to combine the tone of this film with the budget of the original, but as it is, Giver 2 helps make up for some of the mistakes of the first one. With live-action anime movies being popular nowadays, I actually wouldn't mind if someone took another crack at this one. But for now, Giver 2 is the best live-action version of the character. Well, that's all for now. Until next time! <laughs>